Now, Jesus takes us from the, the first century into the last generation in this passage, and you need to be able to see it. When you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then recognize that her desolation is near. That's the first century. Then those who are, who are in Judea must flee to the mountains, and those who are in the midst of the city must leave, and those who are in the country must not enter the city, because these are days of vengeance. That's what tells us it's the first century. So that all things which were written will be fulfilled. All the destruction that was written that would come on, on God's people, Israel, and on Jerusalem, was fulfilled. You understand? Um, woe to those who are pregnant and those who are uh, nursing babies in those days, because it's going to be hard. For there will be great distress upon the land and wrath to this people. Can you all see that's the first century? And they will fall by the edge of the sword and will be led captive into all the nations, and Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles. So that's the first century right on up till... 1967, Jerusalem was trodden underfoot by Gentile rulers till finally it was taken back by the Jewish people. And Jesus said, until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Amen? So people go, oh, what's the time of the Gentiles? Uh, we do that. Why do we do that? We like make mysteries out of things that are not mysteries. Jesus is simply saying that it'll be dominated by Gentile rulers until it's no longer dominated by Gentile rulers. Right? And so that end. So I write, wrote in my Bible back in, 19, I think it was 97. I, did, I just got up courage because I up until then I never wrote my Bible because I didn't like that. It's like the Bible. I don't like writing in the Bible. Because what would happen is you go, you'd write in something wrong and then go back and have to change it. <laughs> So I, when I wrote something in, I really had to believe it. So I wrote in there, 1967. That prophecy of Jesus was fulfilled. And then he goes from there to the last generation. Because that generation, the last generation began in 1967. There will be signs, so we're it. You're looking at the last generation. There's lots of generations since, but our life span is represents the end of the age. Some of us are going to make it. We believe we're going to see Jesus come through the clouds. Actually, no, we're going to be with him when he comes to the clouds. So we're going to see him in the rapture. But we're, we're, we're okay if we're gone, but we'll come out of the grave. But we really think we're going to see him and go up in the air. How about you? You definitely will. Then there will be signs in the moon and the stars and on the earth, dismay among nations in perplexity at the roaring of the sea and the waves. That's starting to happen, isn't it? Right? We're in the, we're in the beginnings of World War III. If you don't think it's happening, it's happening. It's happening. It's already happening. All, the thing, all these things have happened before, but this time is more serious. Right? Um, that it says, then, uh, I'm sorry, and the expectation of the things which are coming upon the world for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And that's, now, the earthquakes, uh, all that, famines, uh, uh, all that, you know, happened over and over. And it, but it's increasing at the end of the age. It's increasing at the end of the age. But what makes this clear that it's the last generation is it says, great signs in the heavens, because the powers of the heavens will be shaken. That's what makes it clear that it's the last day. It's the last days. You understand? It's not, you know, the last 2,000 years. It's the very last generation. Uh, when Ladies. these things begin to take place, what began? Began. Well, 1967. We saw that. Amen? Amen. 1948, when, when the nation was, was back in the land, but not until uh, 1967 w was, were they back in Jerusalem. So that's the completion of their return. You understand? Because without Jerusalem, they weren't really home. 
But in 1967, they were restored to the ancient city, according to prophecy. And he's saying that generation is going to see, the Son of Man come, is going to see everything. All that the prophets have spoken will come to pass in that generation. But when these things begin to take place, straighten up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. So you also, when you see these things happening, recognize that the kingdom of God is... Now, how many people do you hear preaching, the kingdom of God is near? And that was 1967. It's 2023. So you also, when you see these things happening, recognize that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I say to you, this specific generation will not pass away until all things take place. According to Jesus, 1967 is the last generation. So a generation is 70 years. You add 70 to 67. You're looking at 2037 as the beginning of the millennium. Now we're going to throw out dates at you today. I'm going to look at calendars and dates. But I'm going to say that all of this has to be tempered with the fact that we're not perfect and we could miss something. Okay? But I'm showing you what the Bible is saying. I'm not, I'm giving you prophecy from Scripture. It's not me. I'm not prophesying it. You understand? But because we know that prophecy and we know that it was fulfilled in 1967, we can now see when the rest will be fulfilled. You understand? 1967, the, there was a war, the Six-Day War, and that's when, when Israel took back the, the old city of Jerusalem and the Temple Mount. But that's the next thing that has to happen, is the Mount has to be cleared off. Now, it's going to be separated, actually. It's going to be divided. The Muslims will have the mosque, but the Dome of the Rock will be gone, and the Temple will stand there. And that's going to happen soon. Now, uh, there's two stages to the restoration of Israel. First is the physical gathering. Then it's the spiritual. Okay? Uh, Ezekiel 20, 36. I am just have to fly through this. Stage one. For I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from the, all the countries and bring you back to your own land. That's stage one. 1897 was the beginning of that. What happened in 1897? The World Zionist Congress, Theodore Herzl, proposed the Jewish state, wrote a book, founded the World Zionist Congress, and he said 50 years, la 50 years there'll be a Jewish state. 50 years later, he didn't know he was prophesying, but 50 years later, Israel became a nation again. So from 1897 to 1967, 70 years. 70 years. So when you see things happening, Jesus said, when you see these things happening, this is it. No other generation saw Jerusalem back under Jewish control. No other generation saw any of those things. And, and Acts chapter 3 tells us that Jesus will remain in heaven until the restoration promised by the prophets begins. Well, well, if you look and study the prophets, the restoration is the restoration of Israel. You can't miss it. Amen? Israel will be restored. Israel is restored. He has restored Judah and Jerusalem. He has restored the nation. You're living in the last generation. That's a fact. And now we can squabble about a year or a date, but you're in the last generation. There's no getting away from it. Then stage two says, I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean and I will cleanse you from all your impurities, from all your idols, and I will give you a new heart. So the second part is the spiritual restoration. Do you know what happened after they took back the Temple Mount in 1967 in the old city? What happened was then the, the general and the, the political uh, leaders who are, who are secular uh, gave it back to the Muslims to, to, uh, to manage it, but they have sovereignty over it. Okay? 
So they don't want to do anything about the religious situation. But what we know now is they weren't prepared for it. They didn't know how to do it. So in 1967, the Temple Mount Faithful Movement was formed, which later on, another one came out of that called the Temple Institute. So since 1967, they have been preparing to build the temple. It's a spiritual return, which is going to be culminated in our days. Now, I want to tell you, the church has no place for that. So they're on a collision course with that. It's going to drive some people crazy. A temple? What do we need that for? And, and your theology is going to get all turned upside down. So you better get it right now. Amen? We don't want circumstances changing your theology. We want the Bible changing it. But that's what's coming, and a lot of Christians are going to be opposed to it. And they're going to be opposing God's will. Yeah, many of you know that's not where we want to be. Now, so here's the conclusion. The first 70 years, 1897 to 1967, uh, was the physical regathering. At the same time that's happening, there's a parallel revival, a parallel restoration going on in the church. Both Israel and the church are being restored in a parallel at the same time. Right? Eight, uh, in the late 1890s, we had 19, uh, culminating in 1906, but it actually started in 1901. Uh, the Pentecostal revival restored the baptism in the spirit, gifts of tongues. At the same time, Israel, the, the tiny uh, remnant that was in Israel, was learning how to speak Hebrew. And Hebrew language was restored, and uh, the, the Balfour Declaration and all that, right? 1947-48, Israel's restored. Same time, we have the latter rain revival and healing revivals, which restored laying on of hands to the church. And the charismatic movement began in 1967, and the Messianic Jewish movement, while at the same time, Israel is taking back the old city of Jerusalem and the Temple Mount. Do you see the parallel? And it's continued. What was happening, and I don't know why this is so, but what was happening in the, during the Toronto revival was the, the, the Oslo Accords, which is the beginning of the sellout. But anyway, that's another whole story. But you see my chart here. You see that um, there's a sifting going on everywhere. The sifting in Israel, they're being sifted. Who's with the Lord? Who isn't? The church is being sifted. Who's with the Lord? Who isn't? Right? And the harlot church, you see, in the middle, riding the beast. She's going to ride the political system. So Christians, now, there's nothing wrong with talking about politics, because a lot of times we're just talking about the Bible. If you talk about the Bible now, you're talking about politics. But if you're trying to save the world through politics, you're riding the beast. You understand the difference? And a lot of, I mean, I, I appreciate the conservative movement, but we have to keep the kingdom of God separate from what's going on in the country. Because, uh, you know, this is, not Jeru this is not the new Jerusalem, as you hear some of these uh, conservatives go on. Uh, so we need to keep that separate. No, the kingdom of God is coming, but in the meantime, if we had a peaceful nation, that would be nice too. But we're not guaranteed that. Amen? All right, we're going to jump in a little deeper into the second source. Now, you see, Jesus' prophecy is number one, right? I could say that Acts chapter 3 was number two. But anyway, here we have another source that tells us we're in the last generation. It's called the Jewish calendar. Okay? Now, most people don't realize the Jewish calendar is made up uh, of something called the Seder Olam. That's where they get it from. This book was written, uh, this was put together by a man named Jose Ben Halafta in 165 AD. And essentially it's um, a chronology, a biblical chronology, all the years. In the Bible you can trace the number of years right on up to the destruction of the temple by following the dates and times that are given for all of the people in the Bible. So it's a chronology. So you put all the years together, 
And so the Bible, uh, the Bible calendar basically is, is every year after creation. So according to the Jewish calendar today, which is, is wrong, give you, I'll give you the reason it's wrong in a minute, uh, it's 5783. Now, you hear a lot of people, oh, what a great five years, 5783 is a powerful prophecy and all this. It's wrong. Because that's not the year. But it's after, it, they're saying it's 5783 from creation. 5,783 years since the creation. Are you with me? That's how it's calculated. Um, now, why is it wrong? Well, even the Jews themselves acknowledge that it's wrong. And it's wrong simply for the reason that up until the destruction of the temple, it's right. But after that, they followed Daniel's prophecy. And of course, they didn't get Daniel's prophecy right, and they didn't want to recognize Jesus as the Messiah. So they shortened all the Persian years. They cut them down to like, uh, from, from the time of the destruction of the temple to, uh, um, to the second destruction, they have it down to like 400 and something years, and it was way more than that. So there's about uh, 200 years missing in the, in the Jewish calendar. And that's, look it up online. I mean, I have uh, show you some, some uh, headlines there. You'll find that many Jewish scholars acknowledge this that there's missing years, they call them. And they're missing simply because the, the, the rabbis had to change a lot of things because they're struggling with Christianity. In the first century and second century, they are trying to avoid uh, giving any, any encouragement to Christians. They do not want to acknowledge that, that Jesus was the Messiah, so they had to work around. Because Daniel's prophecy clearly tells us when the Messiah is coming, and Jesus was the Messiah. Prophesied the year and everything that is coming, but they couldn't handle that, so they tried to bring it up to Bar Kokhba and make him the, the Messiah and all that. It's, it's all twisted. So we can't trust it from the year of the destruction of the temple. You understand? So I, I discovered this back in, in 1997. Right? Yeah. And uh, I started doing a few, some calculations, and I got out of the calculator and started playing with some things. And then I thought, it, I had this thought, well, if it's right up until the destruction of the temple, then why don't we correct it then with the secular calendar? Because we know the year the temple was destroyed, and we know when it was rebuilt, and we know, uh, you know what happened in 48 and 67. And I've shown you all that when you come to class, right? But... So I did that. Here's what I did. Now, there's one thing that I must tell you first. Uh, the Seder Olam Rabbah, according to the Jewish calendars, the Jewish calendar was adjusted by two years because for something to do with the way he um, calculated the, the first year. Okay, I'm not sure, but it's two years discrepancy. So between uh, that and the Jewish calendar. So um, we're going to add two years, all right? And that's why. And I, it's a complicated technical, and I can't tell you why. Because when even reading it and studying it, I couldn't understand what they're trying to say. Because they don't, none of them really agree. But they all agree that, that you have to add two years to get the present date. So that's what they've done, all right? Now, Destruction of the temple, according to the Seder Olam, is 3338. And it says AM, Anno Mundi, which is really from the, the order of the world, from the beginning of the world. Okay? So uh, that's the date, according to the Seder Olam, to the Jewish calendar has corrected by two years. All right? So it's actually 333, I'm sorry, 3340. That's when the temple was, uh, what did I say here, destroyed, right? Now, the second calendar has that as 586 B.C., and we know that day. We know that's when the calendar was, I'm sorry, the temple was destroyed. Now, so we add the two years to the 3338, 
uh, the Jewish calendar correction, we get 3340. Now, here's what I did. I took that 3340, right? And I added 70 to it because 70 years later, the temple was rebuilt, right? So we get to 3410, which is the year, it's 516 BC, the year that the temple was restored, rebuilt. That we can trust because we have a secular date and we have a biblical date. After that, you can't trust their calendar. So we're correcting it. So based on the 516 date, which we now know to be 3410, I added this simple correction. Are you with me now? Ready to go for it? I've tried to simplify it here. Uh, 3410 in Jewish calendar, temple rebuilt, right? So from 516 BC to 1967, and I have 0.8 because it was in the middle of the year, okay? So I didn't get accurate with the months. I left that with the Lord. I'm just boiling it down to the year. But if you want to sort out the days, I'm sure you'll come out right, okay? Uh, the year, I was satisfied with the year. Um, so the holy place back in Jewish control. So 516 BC plus 1967.8 is 2483.8. Agreed? You can add it if you want. Now, we have to multiply it by our calendar years in order, and then we have to reconvert it to biblical years, because there's 360 days in a biblical year. There's 365 and a quarter days in our year. Understand? So we multiply it by 365 and a quarter, divide it by 360, and we get a number called 2520, which is a, a, occur, occurs in the Bible in several places occurs in creation as well. It's, it's kind of peculiar. So 3410 plus 2520, and that would make 1967 the year 5930. So I have proven that their guys are right when they say it's off by uh, 200 years. That, that would be 202 years. Okay? And they don't know about this, but they say it's off 200 years. So 1967 is 5930. 5930, and I brought it up to the, today's date, not 2023, would be 5986. So the year, the Jewish calendar is actually 5986, not 5783. I wish somebody, I wish the Messianic Jews would catch on to this. I wish somebody would catch on to this. Because they keep quoting that, that would say there's 200 more years before Jesus comes. No. According to this calendar, 14 more years to, the, to uh, the beginning of the millennium. Now, you either accept it or you don't. That's fine. It's up to you. But, but when you put it on top of everything else, it's pretty powerful. Now, the, the year 6,000 is when the millennium begins. It's six days. It's the seventh day. Six days you work, seventh day you rest. Six months the land is worked, seventh year is, I'm sorry, six years is worked, seventh year is rested. Six thousand years of man's activity, the seven thousand is the day of the Lord. It's the millennium, it's the reign of Christ. So it begins in the year 6,000. And according to this, we are 14 years away from that. Now, of course, you have to come back three and a half years to the beginning of the tribulation. So you're looking at about 10 years to the beginning of the tribulation. So, hey, am I a heretic because I'm telling you what the Bible says? No. Now, am I, you know, I'm not prepared to die for the numbers. I'm prepared to die for the fact that we're in the last generation, but not the numbers. But I think the numbers, if you can prove them wrong, go ahead and do it, but I don't think we can because I have looked at them, and they're holding up pretty good. They're holding up very good. All right, uh, there's more. Let's look at some more. Now we have the prophecy of Hosea. So we have Jesus' prophecy. We have what Peter said in Acts chapter 3, that Jesus would be in heaven until the restoration. We know we're in the last generation, right? That now the Jewish calendar is telling us that we have 14 years left. It's confirming that 2037 is the year. You see that? 
So 1967, 70 years, 2037. Is that all coincidental? Well, I think the odds are very, very, very high that it's not. What do you think? Mm -hmm. But there's more. This is Hosea. Now, I, I read the chapter 5 a little bit because you need the background, okay? So I'll quickly go through it. I will be like a lion to Ephraim and like a young lion to the house of Judah. This is both houses, Israel, essentially. Ah, yes, even I will tear to pieces and go away. I will carry away, and there will be none to rescue. The Lord is expressing how his anger over their continued rebellion against him. He's saying, I will go away, and I will leave them, and I will tear them like a lion. I will wound them, right? I will go away and return to my place until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face. In their distress, they will search for me. Right? Are you there? Then chapter 6. There's no chapter and verse in the original. Then the next line says, Come, let us return to the Lord. This is what they're going to say. For he has torn us, but he will heal us. See, like a lion has torn them, God has, has wounded the Jewish people because of their rebellion. They've been punished. But he will heal us. He has wounded us, but he will bandage us. He will revive us after two days. Now, the two days are 2,000 years. In this prophecy, 1,000 years is a day. You understand? That's a biblical concept. It's, it's figurative, but it's, there's 24-hour day is a literal day, but the 1,000 years is a prophetic uh, day also because... God said to Adam, when you uh, eat of the fruit, you will die. That's on the day you will die. Well, he didn't die for 936 years or something, but he died before the thousandth year. He died on that day. You understand? So that goes way back. Peter said, one day with the Lord is as, is as a thousand years. So this is, a, this is a theme. But anyway, but the church, most people accept this. Most of you thought that when the year 2000 came, something would happen, right? Yep. You know why they thought that? This prophecy. Because two days, 2,000 years, they would be wounded, and on the 3,000 would be the healing, would be the millennium, would be the kingdom of God, right? But they applied it to the church and applied it to Jesus, but it's not about Jesus or the church. See, replacement theology got in the way again. It's about the Jewish people being wounded by God and then being healed for two millennia and then the third millennia being restored. Right? That's something I got by revelation after looking at it for a long time. I, because 2000 came and went. And nothing happened. And Y2K didn't do anything. And we were all just a little bit disappointed. <laughs> anyway. Uh, but I knew it wasn't this prophecy, see. You've heard the third day, right? Third day, there's a band called Third Day. This is where they get it from. And then Jesus added to this and supported it by saying, two, two days I will do my work and on the third day I will reach my goal. Well, he wasn't talking about 24-hour periods because there's no evidence of that. He was talking about 2,000 years the gospel would go out, his work would be done, and the third thousand would be the millennium. He would reach his goal. Okay. So, now, I've I got your interest now. I hope. I do. I see your faces. You're, you're getting it. All right. So, they were wounded for 2,000 years. And so, when did the wounding begin? This is the question. Now, the church tried to work it out with the death of Jesus or the, or the birth of Jesus. And both of those dates came and went. And that's when I realized it's about the wounding of Israel. So the wounding began, first I thought it was 70 AD, but it wasn't. It started in 66 in the north of the country. The Romans came through the War of the Jews, it's called. Uh, he, they came down, Josephus gives us the, all the details. They came from the north of the country and worked their way down the country uh, starting in 66 and down to like 68 when they laid siege against Jerusalem and it fell in, in, in uh, 70 AD. And then they finished and went down to Masada and took that high place, uh, 72 A.D. Okay? So it began in 66 A.D. Are you with me? 
That's a date in history. So uh, you take that date and um, you, the 2,000 years now, they're biblical years. They're prophetic years. Two days, remember? Yeah. Wounded two days, third day risen up. So there are two prophetic days of 1,000 years, and they're each year in the Bible is 360 days. So what we have to do is multiply 2,000 by 360, we get 720,000 days. 720,000, we do the thing where we make it divided into our, make it our years, and we end up with 1971 of our years. When we add 66 to 1971 to 66, we get 2037. Okay, now did I, did I twist that? No, that's there. I didn't add anything to it or subtract anything to it. I just discovered it. So, and you come back three and a half years, we're back on the same track again. And then you come back seven years to the beginning of the 70th week, and guess what year it is? 2030. When their globalists have determined that they're setting up their great reset and their new world order. So we have, between now and 2030, we have major war, major fighting that's going to take place in the world, major cal calamity. Now, do they want to hear that out there? No. Do I want to hear that? No. None of us do. But it, we need to be prepared for it. But we're excited because it means Jesus is coming soon. Amen? So do you find that encouraging? 